Let me show you something exciting, something that makes me more productive. I'm going to execute Zelich and I hope that's how it's pronounced. Maybe it's not, I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm going to call it Zelich. I'm going to specify a name of the session and the layout and boom, that's everything I need. Nicely split into tabs and panes. Cluster is being created in a floating pane. If you fast forward a few moments, we can see that the floating pane disappeared once the cluster is fully operational, leaving us with two panes. The top one is waiting for me to press the enter key and once I do, it starts running tests continuously. If I move to the bottom tab and press the enter key, it starts watching for managed resources. Once I am finished developing, I can switch to the second tab and press the enter key to destroy everything I created so far. I am done working and look at this, I haven't even touched my mouse. Everything I needed was waiting for me and all the operations I performed were done through keyboard shortcuts. The tool that enabled all that is Zelich. Let's talk about it. Zelich describes itself as a terminal workspace with batteries included. That makes sense if you're not already familiar with Tmux. If you are, you can think of Zelich as a better or at least easier version of it. On the other hand, if you're not already using or at least familiar with Tmux, it is a terminal multiplexer. That probably does not mean much if you haven't used it before. So let me explain what terminal multiplexers are. Terminal multiplexers are types of applications that can be used to create pseudo terminal sessions. Now, while I'm saying all that, I realize that pseudo terminal sessions might be confusing as well. So let's skip all the mumbo jumbo type of explanations and show you Zelig and through it, how multiplexer terminals work and what they do. Let's start with the new Zelig session. Now that does not look very exciting. It looks like a normal terminal session except for the top and bottom panes. At the top is the session name and the list of tabs while the bottom pane contains the list of common shortcuts. We'll explore both of those soon. For now what matters is that you are in control and you can for example choose not to display the bottom pane with the shortcuts and once you develop muscle memory you will probably not need it. But today or at least for now, we will keep it. From here on, we can execute commands just as we would in a normal terminal. When I start working on this specific project, the first action is to create a cluster and install and configure everything. And I already automated all that with just, so let's just execute it. That operation will take a few minutes to complete, leaving me with two options. I can watch something on YouTube or I can open a second tab and do some work while waiting for the current process to finish. Well, watching YouTube is often a good idea. And after all, that's what you're doing right now. I will go with the second option. Pressing Ctrl T gives us additional shortcuts related to operations related to tabs. We can see that tab is selected at the bottom menu and that some, not all, but some shortcuts related to tabs are listed below it. Since we want to open a new tab, we can see that the shortcut is N. So let's press it. A new tab is opened and we can, for example, output readme to see instructions related to this project. Now let's get back to the first tab by pressing Ctrl T again. Now we can move between tabs by pressing left and right arrow keys. So let me press the left arrow followed by the enter key to select the tab we selected which sounds strange. Anyway, you need to select what you selected. That's how it works. While the cluster is being created, we can open a second pane, not tab, this time pane, by pressing Ctrl P and just as with tabs, the end button to create a new one. It might be nice to create a third pane below the first one, so let's press Ctrl P to select panes, then the left arrow key to move to the left pane and finally D to create a new pane below it or down from it. Actually, this does not seem right. I do not really need the pane on the right side. Two panes split horizontally should be enough for now. So we'll remove the right pane by pressing Ctrl P followed by the right arrow key to move to the right pane and X to delete it. Now, something might be wrong with the packages that are being deployed to the cluster, so let's check them out. It seems okay. 
but we might not need the lower pane to be half of the screen. Let's reduce its size by pressing Ctrl M to resize it, followed with the bottom arrow. And once we are done making it smaller, we can press the Enter key to select that pane. By now the cluster should be fully operational. So let's move to the top pane by pressing Ctrl P, the arrow key up and the Enter key to select it. And now we can run Test Watcher. Since my tests are creating some managed resources before running assets, I often want to see which resources are created. So we'll move to the bottom pane and you already know how to do that. Press the Ctrl P button followed with the arrow down key and the Enter key to select the pane. Now we can watch manage resources by executing Vidi, for example, which is a watcher and kubectl get managed. Now, let's say that we would like to take a closer look at the tests in the top pane by putting it into the full screen mode. We can do that by pressing Ctrl P followed with the arrow key up to move up and pressing F for full screen. The top pane now occupies almost the entire screen. Once we are finished marveling at the test results, we can go out of the full screen by repeating the process. Ctrl P followed by F. We can also move panes by pressing Ctrl H followed by the arrow key down to move the top pane down. Once we are finished, we can get out of the current session by pressing Ctrl O followed by D to detach from it. The important note here is that we did not close the session but only detached from it. It's still there, we're just not attached to it. We can confirm that's truly the case by listing all the sessions. And look at that, there is only one session. Once you start working with Zellige, you'll probably have many detached sessions and you will be able to attach to any of them and continue where you left. Since we have only one detached session, we can attach back to it by executing Zellige attach without specifying the name of the session we want to attach to. We can see that both panes are still running processes that were active before we detached from the session. So far, we use the default shortcuts and plugins. I like saying defaults and I rarely change them. So my Zellige configuration is untouched, at least for now. If you do want to remap some bindings or add some plugins, all we have to do is create a new config file. But since it is silly to start from scratch, we can dump the existing configuration to a file and modify it. Since both panes in the first tab are doing something, or to be more precise, waiting for something, we'll switch to the second tab by pressing Ctrl T followed by the arrow right key to move to the right tab and the Enter key to select the only pane in it. And now we can get the current config by executing Zellige setup dash dash dump config. We can see all the key bindings, the list of plugins and some general settings like uh, whether to detach or quit on force close, whether to use a simplified UI, the default shell, the theme and so on and so forth. If we would send the output of that file to .config, zellige, config, uh, .kdl, all we would have to do is change any of those parameters and enjoy. Now let's say that we are finished working and would like to destroy the cluster we created. We could do that by moving to the first tab and instead of using arrow keys we'll do that slightly differently this time. We will or I will press Control T followed by number one. That is especially useful if we have many tabs. If we would like to move from the first to the fifth tab instead of pressing the arrow right key four times we can just press number five. Next, we'll press Ctrl C to stop watching tests and type just cluster destroy to execute yet another just task that will get us back to square zero. We should probably stop watching manage resources as well. So let's press Ctrl P followed by arrow up key to move to top pane and press the enter key to select it. Now we can stop the process as well by pressing Ctrl C. And we are done. So let's exit Zellige session by pressing Ctrl Q for quit. We're out. We're done working, but there are a few other Zellige related features we should probably explore. We might want to leave the session we just quit active so that we can attach to it again, or we might want to delete it. We can do that, at least the latter, by listing all the sessions and executing Zellige delete session followed by the name of the session and forcing deletion. And this is important. Here comes, in my opinion, the most important feature of Zellige, the ability to define the layout. While 
it's great to be able to create panes and tabs and move them around and tweak them to get the environment that is just right those operations are tedious. I don't want to waste precious minutes every time I start working. So I have two options, I believe, at least two options to avoid that. I can do it once, just as we did so far, and keep the session alive forever and ever so that we can simply attach to it and continue where we left. That's not always a good idea since, at least in my case, I want a repeatable process that always starts from scratch. I need to create a cluster first, then jump into the tub with paints to run tests, watch manage resources and a few other things. And finally, a different tab from where I can destroy everything. If I would be attaching to an existing session, I would always start from the end or where I left and not from the start. A potentially better option or alternative is to create a layout for each project. Here's the one I use in this repo. At the top is the default tab template, which will be applied to any tab defined below or created during a session. Or there we have a borderless pane with size one, meaning that it will occupy one row. That pane will display tab bar, which is a plugin that shows, as the name suggests, the top bar we already saw, the one you saw previously. At the bottom of that section, there is a second pane, this time with size two. Just as the top one, that one is also based on a plugin, except that this time it is the status bar. That's the one with shortcuts and statuses. In between those two is the single entity children, which essentially means put there whichever other panes you define. So all the panes will define will be between those two panes defined in the default tab. Further on, we have the do tab, which should be focused by default. That one will start with floating panes, which as the name suggests are, well, floating. We haven't explored floating panes just yet. They're awesome and we'll see them in action soon, very, very soon. Inside the floating panes section is a single pane named cluster, which will automatically execute just command with the cluster create argument. Since the purpose of that one is to create a cluster and disappear, be gone. Once it is done, it is set to close on exit. Then there are coordinates, X and Y, and the size, width or height. And finally, that pane should be in focus. Further on, we have two normal panes. One that executes Test Watcher and the other that observes managed resources. All of that is the first tab where I spend most of my time. I might create additional panes depending on what I'm doing, but those three are always there since I always need them. Then there is the second tab called done. As the name suggests, that's where I go when I'm done working and will execute the just command with cluster destroy argument. Now, all those tabs except the floating one have start suspended set to true. That means that the command specified for those panes will not be executed automatically, but only after we press the enter key. Let's see that layout in action by executing Zellige to start a new session cross-plane Kubernetes with the layout defined in the test layout.kdl file. And look at that. There is a floating pane in the middle that started executing the process that creates and configures the cluster. I do not have to do anything but wait until it is done. The moment the process executed in the floating pane finished, the pane itself disappeared. Poof! Leaving us with two panes, both waiting for us to press the enter key to start the predefined uh, processes. So let's do just that. And by that, I mean, press the enter key to start executing the tests watcher. Next, we'll move to the bottom pane by pressing control P followed by the arrow down and enter keys to select it and another enter key to execute the predefined process that watches for managed resources. Now, let's say that we finished uh, writing and testing code and that we would like to destroy everything. That's what the second tab is for, at least in this layout. So let's move there by pressing Ctrl T followed with number two. The destroy everything command is waiting patiently for us to press the enter key. So let's just press it like this. A few moments later, we are done and we can exit the session by pressing Ctrl Q. And look at it, wasn't that an awesome and streamlined experience? 
there's much more to Zellige and I will leave it to you to explore the rest yourself. All I will say is that Zellige is awesome and that I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend it. It's so great that I won't even do the typical pros and cons section. Uh, there isn't a single thing I don't like about it. Actually, there is one, but I doubt that you will discover. So let me know in the comments if you find one negative thing which I will not mention today. It's a no-brainer, Zellige at least, if you need multiple paints or tubs when working in a terminal. Thank you for watching, see you in the next one, cheers!